Can we call General Member Fort Menzies? Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. I refer to Labor's new family car and new tax. Last year, order, order, order. Last year, order, order. Members on my right, there is far too much noise. If members on my right continue to interject, they will leave the chamber. I don't know how many times I have to tell everyone. Questions are going to be heard in silence, and then ministers will be given the same courtesy. So, out of respect for the member for Menzies, he'll begin his question again. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. I refer to Labor's new family car and new tax. Last year, order. Just remember, or is he in seat? On the point of order, the Leader of the House. Yeah, Mr. Speaker. Uh, question time. Ministers can be asked about issues within their responsibility. They can't be asked about something fictitious. That he's referring to a policy that does not exist. Order. Order. Order, members on my order, members on my right. The member for McNamara is warned. I can't make any member phrase a question as I see fit. It is up to that individual. Obviously, the minister can respond accordingly. We've had this issue before over the last couple of weeks. I just ask for everyone to temper their language. And for the third time, I'm going to ask the member for Menzies to get to his question and be heard in silence. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy, and I refer to Labor's new family car and ute tax. Last year, in my home state of Victoria, 78 per cent of sales were either SUVs or light commercial vehicles and utes. The top-selling cars were the Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux and Isuzu D-Max. Industry analysis shows that, that they would attract penalties of $17,000, $14,000 and $13,000, respectively, by 2029. Why does this Labor government want to punish Australians for their choices? Order. Give a call to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. Thanks, uh, Mr Speaker. Again, I very much appreciate the question. In fact, I, I suspect I appreciate being asked it more than the member appreciate being asked to ask it, Mr Speaker. <laughs> She's been put in a rather tricky situation because, Mr Speaker, what we're about is giving Australians more choice of more fuel-efficient vehicles. And in, fact, and in fact, for electorates that are in outer urban areas or regional areas, Mr Speaker, they save more in fuel costs by having more efficient cars because they drive more. They drive more. Mr Speaker, Order. Again, on my left. again, that is the fact, but others have said it more eloquently than I have, Mr Speaker. <laughs> The member for Bradfield, writing in The Australian, wrote, and I quote, Order. given the long distances travelled in regional Australia, Order. the savings the could be even greater for business. people living outside the main cities, Mr Speaker. <laughs> when he's good, he's good, isn't he, Mr Speaker? When he's good, he's good, the member for Bradfield. Now, again, again I, have, I have to confess, Mr Speaker, I quoted the member for Bradfield earlier, and I left a sentence out, which I shouldn't have done. I talked about how... In the United States, the member for Bradfield was arguing demand for cars was the same before fuel efficiency standards were after, but he actually went into more detail than that. He said, he said, and I'll give the full quote, so when fuel efficiency standards were introduced in the US, the most popular models before introduction stayed the most popular models after introduction. This is what I left out last time. Essentially what Americans call pickup trucks and what we would call utes, Mr Speaker. <laughs> Like the Chevy Silverado, there wasn't a material change in price, and we don't expect there would be a material change in price here, Mr. Speaker. So we've got an opposition that is so negative that they oppose Order. our policies. Fair enough, we're used to that. But they oppose their own policies as well, Mr. Speaker. Now, I suspect, I suspect, Mr. Speaker, the opposition could do with looking at how some groups have responded to this policy. Groups that actually represent the interests of motorists, Mr. Speaker. Order. Like Australia's oldest Member motoring Member group, the King. NRMA. The NRMA who said, Order. Who said the NRMA welcomes the release of the Australian Government's announcement and we are pleased that a responsible and achievable option over time is being presented to the Australian people. So the Chief Executive of the NRMA, which has been standing up for motorists since 1920, which is about 104 more years than they have, Mr Speaker, 
because they actually don't stand up for Australian motorists or choice to stand up for Australian consumers across the board. The Leader they of the said, Nationals. They said the absence of standards in Australia has made Australia an unattractive market for more efficient vehicle manufacturers. Choice stands up for consumers. The NRMA stands up for consumers and motorists. This side of the House stands up for consumers and motorists. That side of the House Order. just stands for scare campaigns which won't survive contact with reality.